One Circuit Mailbag, coming to you live from downtown Tasmania. One Circuit, if you're here to learn about Taylor Swift, well, we can't help you. Okay, let's see what's in this little one. Pretty light. Uh, ooh, some sort of board. Not sure what. Let's have a look. Some wiring and a bit of a rat's nest. So we've got some input and output. It is. Model TCL758 main V1, made in China. Hmm. PIR there, apparently, it says. Oh, you can put a PIR on there, but it's not actually there. QC passed. Does that look like a little relay or something? What is that? It's got a QC pass, which is obscuring what it is. Ah, uh, we've got a PIR here. Okay, I think think this is something for turning on oh is that a loose one no for maybe turning on would that be a big load uh given that something walks past and you can set the sensitivity of it love to get in and have a look at that chip there and see what it is hey, yeah let's get a little closer and uh you know, vcc ground out that's out on this side but it's not linked up it's weird, actually, that these, what presumably would have been holes originally, are actually filled in with solder. That's a little annoying. Uh, and then the outs over this side is via a JST. Uh, so presumably you can pull that out, uh, although it looks pretty well glued in there, actually. What a strange piece that is. All right, um, I'll get a bit closer, find out what that chip is, and uh, see if I can find the listing online. The seller seems to have disappeared from AliExpress, which is a little disturbing. But there are a few others that are on the on that site, but there's no real information about how this works. So what I've been able to cobble together is that this pot over here isn't about the sensitivity of the PIR, which is currently hiding. It's actually about the amount of time that the relay is on once the PIR is triggered. And then on the other side, there's some uh, there's three pins here which are. Uh, like jumper, I think it's labelled J3, and uh, mucking around with that, I can see that, you know, it can be normally off or normally on. I think that's what that's about. There's also another resistor here, or pads for a resistor, R8, and presumably you could put something like a, um, a zero ohm resistor or something like that in there. Presumably that's another selector. But so far, uh, and I haven't had a deep look, but so far not a lot of information about the chip or the module itself. It does, however, work. So if I reveal myself, the light does go on and it stays on for, well, this is set at the moment to the shortest possible time. Uh, unfortunately, I fiddled around with this for a little bit too long, thinking it was something to do with sensitivity, but it's not. So in this position, it's probably around the 20 second mark or so before uh, this pops, uh, this shuts off. And then if you uh, rotate this around, that time is a longer time. I'm guessing because it is a relay, you can actually put a half decent load through here. Uh, at the moment, it's just a, I think it's a one or a three watt LED with a 290 ohm uh, resistor on there. So I haven't got an awful lot of load in there. But I'm guessing this is the sort of thing that you could have perhaps in your driveway or in a door or something like that. So uh, when, you, when it's triggered, uh, a decent load comes on. I probably want to know a little bit more about how it works. Um, but I'm probably sure that I ordered it because I've got some idea that at some point uh, I'd be looking to maybe have a passive infrared sensor actually triggering a bigger load than just an, uh, which, which, which I've got at the moment, which is just for LEDs. Um, and yeah, so that is the, um, that is that, uh, module. And, um, I don't know that I'd buy it again. I think I'd probably be more, uh, confident making it myself, uh, and no. <laughs> What was in there and what all these little jumpers and so forth uh, mean. Um, I, can, I can see another little pad down there that says H and L, for instance. Um, yeah, so a bit of a mysterious module. Does work, does do something, um, but I'm not sure how useful it'll be long term. Parcel full of parcels, I would say. Um, 
Oh, okay. Quite loosely packed. There's a few different ones in here. It's amazing what they do with drop shipping these days. They just put sort of random items together. Uh, let's have a look bit by bit. So this one looks like, ah, oh, my old favourite, the QX5252. Yeah, using these both for sort of like making lots of lights at the moment, but also doing a fair bit of experimentation. This is sort of like the T092 version, which I'm thinking is maybe less and less useful as time goes on because you can't uh, change when it comes on. So the uh, the smaller version, the five pin version, has, uh, I think it's called LS, light sensor. Uh, and you can turn that on or off. And basically that means how it responds to the solar panel. Uh, and there are some instances now where I want the QX52 to be outputting day and night. Uh, more about that in a later video. But there is some others for the earlier version which basically come on at night. Yeah, nice one. Okay. And what is this one? This one is... Hmm, 10 pieces SOP20 to dip 20 PCB board. So just a, a dip to, uh, or SOP to dip adapter by the sounds of things. Possibly because I've ordered some chips which are SOP20. And if you want to experiment on them, uh, then you need dip 20. Yeah, that's exactly what they are. So let's open up and have a little bit of a look. Uh, how many's in there? It looks like not that many. 10? Yeah, so we've got the SSOP20 on one side and the SOP20 on the other. Some generous pads there and there is the holes there for putting in the uh, uh, putting in your pins to do the dip uh, adapter. Do I have any of those pins handy to show? Oh, we had a pins, had a pins, mail. Yep, here we go. Oh, they're doubles. I think that's next to useless in this scenario. Uh, here we go. This this one. Yeah, so there's your header pins. Um, just bite them off and chuck them in there and you're good to go. Um, yeah, not much more you can really say about that. What does that say? 0.65 millimeter pitch on one side and 1.27 millimeter pitch on the other side. Adapter boards. Good one. All right, 10 thereof. So presumably at some stage some chips are going to arrive that I can use in them. So QX5252, and then what else have we got today? Uh, let's open this guy up. It says, Shenzhen Xianwei Communication. Made in China, that's a surprise. Uh, some other bits and pieces. Well packaged. And inside, uh, they're probably the chips to match. Are these maybe CH32 blah blahs that I've been playing with at the moment? Let's have a look. Yeah, we're going to have to get right down to see that writing. Well, let's get one out and see if it matches. I suspect the SSOP on here. Yeah, as suspected, WCH is the manufacturer. These are these little RISC 5 chips. Just. Amazing what they're coming up with at the moment. This is the CH32V203 F6 P6. I'll put some specs up for you. 20 pins. And uh, I think these guys are going to be the next rabbit hole that I am going to get. And I saw on Twitter the other day a posting about a book available uh, so that you can program these in Assembler, which is you know my preferred language uh, at the base metal. Uh, it just seems like beautiful chips. I don't know. I mean, I'm still pretty much down the Paduk rabbit hole. But, um, yeah, th that's what these are about. I think this is sort of like a, a toe uh, dipped in the ocean of Risk Five, um, And you can see there that um, this is where you would uh, put them on the adapter and uh, and then break them out to uh, – oh, have we lost focus? Of course we have. Let me just fix that up for you. Uh, yeah, and then uh, you would put them on the uh, – um, like prototyping uh, board, put them on your breadboard, start to hook some stuff up, program them and so forth. I have really no idea about the landscape for these ones um, and I think a, a bit of time will need to be 
allocated to do it properly, but I'm quite excited by this particular uh, manufacturer and uh, what they're doing in this space. Um, some amazing work. So, yeah, I think we'll probably see some more of these as time goes by. But uh, anyway, they're the boards uh, and the uh, the adapter boards, I should say, and uh, and the chips themselves. Yeah, lovely. Next in the packet looks like some inductors. 270 micro henry. Uh, the QX5252 output is regulated by the size of the inductor. And I'm doing some experiments at either end of that scale. So down to quite low 33 micro henry up to more than what the specs allow, which is around 400 micro henry. So these are 270 and the handy dandy tester. Let's have a look. Oh, that's a bit of a flare. Let's try at that angle and let's try a test. And we're looking at anywhere close is good. Yeah, this one says 0 0.25 milli Henry, which is 250 micro Henry, plus or minus probably, you know, maybe. I don't know, a couple of percent at least. So I would say that's probably going to be in the ballpark of uh, of what we need. This always seems to read a little lower than what uh, rated. I found that right across the spectrum. But, um, yeah, that's what these are for. 400, uh, sorry, 0410, which basically relates to the size and I think the uh, the wattage. Uh, but the 270 microhenry, close enough. Which leaves us with one mysterious package. Oh, not that mysterious. I can feel through the plastic that we have a camera tripod and mount. So there's been a couple of shots even as we speak in this video, which are taken from these little tripods. I find them so handy because you can sit them on the bench like that, but they they bend and hold. So the camera, which is this one up here, I'll point to, uh, it's uh, an old phone, Nokia 5, hideous thing, um, but uh, it's actually held in place upside down and the legs are curled over another bracket, which uh, runs transversely through the shot. So, um, yeah, I am using these in all sorts of interesting places now and not just to hold cameras either, but, um, it's just a handy mount to have and it's standard on the end here. So you can hook up a few different things to it. So a camera, for instance, or, uh, or what have you. And, uh, and yeah, then you can film in all sorts of bizarre places. I've had it on fence posts. Um, you know, that your ground doesn't have to be solid because this will, will bend the base of it. Uh, are these little rubber dots here and they, uh, they hold everything pretty well. There's a, a, a ball here, a gimbal, I guess you, I don't know what you'd call that. And it, it, it allows not a full degree of motion, but a fair bit. And there's a cutaway here that you can actually, uh, go down to like the 90 degrees. Uh, there's a little spring loaded clip here, which, uh, you can hold different devices in. And all the way along, you've got the ability to um, to tighten or loosen the joints to hold them or not as you see fit. So, yeah, these are pretty handy. I don't know what they cost. Practically nothing. I want to say a couple of dollars, three dollars, let's say. Um, but, yeah, if you are always running, here's another one over here. Look at this. <laughs> if you're running short of uh, places to hold your camera, really recommend these guys. I think I got one or two a long time ago. And, uh, oh, he's lost his little rubber. He's lost his little rubber foot. Did not realize that um that's interesting a bit of hot glue would probably fix that up but not that it's a, a big deal they're often not uh, on solid ground anyway they're usually hanging from places but yeah if you uh, are looking for uh, cheap uh, reliable semi-reliable camera mounts uh, these ones are the go-to for me anyway that is the mailbag for the week and uh, we'll catch you next time see ya